welcome back to the show. We've got special guests from 3 p.m. Brennan and Scott, how are you guys doing today? Good. What's up? Oh, man, we're so excited to find out more about you guys. I know you've uh, just survived uh, a warp Tour experience. Tell us how that uh, experience made you a better band. Um, I mean, it was, it was a really exhausting tour, obviously, but we learned so much. It was very educational for us in a lot of ways because we had to drive ourselves, so, of course, sleep was not the most top priority. Top priority. <laughs> it was not very common, but um, we made a lot of great bands, sold a lot of CDs, and impressed a lot of the right people and made a lot of great friends like with a lot of the bands and the people that work behind the scenes. So we definitely grew as a band and as people just from going on this crazy two-month adventure, and we survived it, which is the big thing. <laughs> well, it's definitely a, uh, like, it's like a boot camp. It's like survival, you know, all, all over again to see who's really got the guts to, to get out there and bring the music to the fans, because it's one thing sure. to just uh, sit in your bedrooms, make some music, and upload it, but... You know, we all know the great, great bands are the ones that are out there in front of the fans, you know, across country, around the world. Growing up, who were some of your musical heroes? Who did you guys really look up to? Who inspired you to want to do this? Um, well, I, I definitely grew up listening to, like, some older, like, classic rock because uh, basically it was what my dad listened to. And then in, like, you know, elementary, middle school, I started listening to my brothers listened to, which is, like, you know, Blink-182. Um, also some 41, all good pop punk like that, which definitely put me into the genre and made me, you know, want to be one of them. So that, that was, those were my early uh, musical influences. Uh, as for me, um, I listened to everything from, like, just reggae and then ska music, like Sublime and No Doubt when I was younger. And then I started to get a little bit more into pop punk and punk rock music, like Green Day and All Time Low when they were coming up. So a lot of different fans and artists that have influenced me, like even John Mayer or like Ed Sheeran recently, um, they just influenced me as like a musician and a songwriter. Yeah, why is it important to have some kind of deep roots, you know, listen to different types of music that you can draw upon rather than just one style? Sorry, can you repeat that? There, you were breaking up a little bit. Yeah, what, why is it important to have some deep roots and listen to different music and kind of go back to really build some great, you know, depth to what you do as opposed to listen to one kind of flavor the whole time. Yeah, well, every, every kind of music is different. It can give you different influences. Like, I guess there's not a single band out there who doesn't have influences from more than one, you know, type of, like, genre type of band. Because I, I got into music generally from, like, classic rock and then going to the pop punk genre, you know, from other pop punk bands. And I, I still now listen to, like, some metal and stuff just to see, like, it's cool to try and integrate everything into to make your own style, you know, not just be limited to one thing and very, like, I guess, sounds kind of rude, but, like, narrow-minded. You don't want to be like that, you know? Yeah, you don't want to be a third-rate version of, you know, one, one style. You really want to kind of mix it up, because, like, all those bands okay. you mentioned before, they they drew from a number of different styles and kind of made it their own flavor. For sure. Yeah, because, like, you draw from bands... And you use that to create kind of your own sound, and you kind of craft your own sound, and you really try to perfect it. And you may draw from a lot of these other bands, but people end up thinking that, like, you took all these influences and turned it into something of your own, and that's what we're trying to do. Sure. Now, the name 3PM, what does that signify? That is a secret, actually. <laughs> Everyone wants to know. It's an acronym, but that's all we're going to tell you. So we must stay tuned for further details. Well, you can say 2 you want. Okay, great. Well, the name is the name. And, uh, you know, more importantly, I know you uh, record your record with Paul Levitt, who's worked with All Time Low and Since His Fail, Dangerous Summer. And you also got to do the song Overdrive with Austin Bellow from Forever the Sickest Kids. Talk yeah. about what you learned from, you know, each process of, you know, making music and, and – honing your craft as songwriters and musicians? Well, with Paul Levitt, um, it was really cool because obviously we all listened to All Time Low, and getting to work with the producer who, who did their first few albums was really cool. We went, because he was in his studio in Baltimore, so we went downtown, and uh, I think the whole process took about a month, and we did pre-production with him, which we hadn't really done before. We recorded up our first album, 
which basically just means that we really perfect the songs and make sure that like they're the best they can be before we get anything recorded. Uh, so that was Paul, and we loved working with him. With Austin, we had just two or three days to record one song. And so we went in with a bunch of different ideas, we showed it to him, and he kind of helped us r write something entirely crafted from all of our different ideas. And it ended up being Overdrive, and our fans love it. So that's just going to be what we end up, it's going to be like the first single off of whatever album we do next. Sure, and I know you've had a chance to play with All Time Low. What, what do you learn from, you know, veteran bands out there that have been doing it for years? We just certainly, um, I mean, we came up kind of, we're in the same place as All Time Low, like, that, you know, literally the same place as well as, you know, the same kind of music and stuff. And we kind of learned, like, they just, they never really stopped. So they've been around for a while now. They started young, just like us, and they always kept with it, and that's really what we learned, that, you know, just always advancing your, I guess advancing your sound, advancing yourselves as people, and just always really the biggest thing is staying with them. That's what we're trying to do now. Sure. And and talk about the High School Nation tour. What was that about, and wh where did that take you? Well, it, it was an interesting experiment, because um, we'd never played at a high school before, and we heard about this company, High School Nation, and they kind of set us up with a few different shows around, like, the East Coast, we went to, um, I think the furthest we went was somewhere in Pennsylvania. Yeah, right? like Philadelphia. Right? Yeah, Philadelphia or somewhere like that. And uh, it, it was very, also, like, 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 like more sort of educational. Um, we made some new fans. We got some, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, there's just, you know, people in high school, there's some stupid kids, and then there's the nice kids. <laughs> yeah. So we had experience with both of them. It was, it was fun, though, because, like, being in high school, I see that, or, I mean, I, at the time, being in high school, like, you see that stuff every day, and you go around, and it's like, ah, it's just the same here, you know? <laughs> but it was really fun. It was, it was definitely an interesting experience playing for people who are all in the same age group as, because normally we play, you know, there are some younger kids and older kids at our shows, and this was all a very uh, focused audience, and it was kind of cool. Sure. Well, I know, like I said, you guys got a lot of road, you know, ahead of you. What, what are some of the things... They're on your bucket list. What 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 do you want to do? What what do you hope to achieve with 3 p.m.? I would like to go skydiving before I die. That's, that's not with 3 p.m. That's just in general. Um, with 3 p.m. <laughs> I guess in in, in a, the near future we're going to start working on our new album. You know, right now we're pretty, we're starting writing and we're just figuring out what exactly we're going for. So that's I guess the near future bucket list. Is that what we're talking about? Like a yeah, just what what some of the things are that you know you would love to do in this business or just in life. My big dream, I would love to play Madison Square Garden. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've always wanted wanted what to be like to you know tour with some of my favorite bands. Like if we were able to tour, you know, with the Blink One Eight Two or All Time Low or something like that, that would certainly be a dream come true. <laughs> sure. Now I know, like I said, you guys are fairly new in the game but you know gained a lot of experience by being around all these bands on a warp tour what advice do you give to young musicians young bands that come up to you and kind of want to know what what to do because i think you know in this younger computer internet generation a lot of people think that they're shortcuts and you can just go online and google something or click this or you know you, you're talking about being uh you know, uh, protégés of bands that have been doing this for a decade or, or two or more in some cases. So what, what do you tell them as far as the dedication or sacrifice or perseverance it takes beyond just having fun at this? Yeah, the, the, obviously, you know, social media and internet is great and all, but there is a limit to it. You, the biggest thing is just getting out there in person. Like, go to shows that are, you know, whether it's a local band to make friends with them or some huge band, like, you know, All Time Low comes around, Go to their show and just promote to the people online, you know, uh, whether it's putting on flyers. We always give up wristbands. That's kind of our thing. And, uh, you know, try and get your music out there. That's the best way because when you're actually getting into the face of these people, they see you and they, they get they get to know you better. And then they'll, they'll uh, I guess, find more of a liking in you rather than just being messaged on Facebook, like with a big spam, you know. And always just keep staying with it. Never give up. And never stop writing music. Never stop promoting yourselves because... The, the second you stop it, nobody's going to give it to you, do it for you. You know, you just have to do it yourself. Yeah, you really got to want this because none of it's easy. And when, when you see how grueling and, 
you know what it takes to be on the warp tour you 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 know that all those great bands you know went through that fire to get to the other side oh yeah they certainly have the days of touring in the dirty old van without air conditioning and then you know that then they make it to the big to the big time <laughs> everyone starts somewhere sure so what what's coming up next for 3 p.m. working on a new album we're writing some new songs and trying to get the contents of a new album together. Um, just kind of shopping for producers right now and, and talking to some labels. And we have some shows coming up on September 14th in Richmond, Virginia, at the Canal Club. We're playing a show with uh, Set It Off, and they were on one of the big stages at Orb Tour. And we're good friends with those guys, so we're excited to play with them. And just very open future, I guess, we have. I mean, no, we don't have a lot of sense done yet, but um, maybe get a tour in before the summer and get an album out, too. But other than that, it's just smooth sailing. Well, we're excited to catch up with you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Can't wait to see you out there on the road. And uh, please, man, keep keep making great music. Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. We'll be in touch. We'll send you links. All right. Have a great weekend.